Hello, my name is William Stern. Today I will be presenting Super Mario 64 Camera Control and Animation by Steve, uh, which is based on a paper by Steve Raven. A good third person camera should smoothly follow the character as it moves while attempting to keep the same distance and gently orbit to stay behind the character. A character should be controlled in a way that as if it were being controlled from inside the camera. This is not as easy as it may seem to implement. There are two issues we need to deal with when making a camera, a third person camera. The first is that the camera is always moving and the second is that we need to map the camera into the world coordinates. A character can be expected to move in a single plane most of the time so we don't need to be concerned with the height information. Below is a relationship mentioned before between the camera and the character. Two vectors are needed to map the camera into world coordinates. The first vector is the forward vector. This corresponds to the up and down controls. This is trivial to find because it is the direction the camera is facing. Now that we have the forward vector, we need to remove the height information and normalize the vector. Next, we can find the right vector using the relationship below. Ideally, we would interpret the values we get from the controller as values from negative 1 to 1, but in reality, we may, it may be a range of integers such as negative 128 to 127. With the forward and right vectors obtained, we can now use the relationship below to map the camera to the world coordinates. The next step is to sample over the magnitude and direction of the user input so we can determine what speed the character should be moving. We store the speed of the character in two vectors, one for the magnitude and the another for the direction so that we never attempt to orient the character with a zero vector. The next step is to rotate the character over time based on input converging on the desired direction. To make this look good we need to dampen this change in direction. This formula, this is a simple formula for dampen, providing a dampening effect. This simple solution to the problem adds a portion of the desired direction it is a fairly robust if we account for frame rate fluctuations, but at 100% frame rate fluctuations, it behaves unpredictably. Below is a improved dampening formula which turns the character 90 degrees towards the objective in a single second no matter what the frame rate fluctuation may be. For a greater change in direction such as a full 180 degree turn a transitional animation should be used instead of dampening. Now that we can turn the character we need to translate the character based on its current speed. Dampening can be used to control the character's speed. In this case there are more conditions we need to account for. One condition the the first condition is the that we want to have the character accelerate to a full run in a tenth of a second. At this point we should reach our maximum speed so acceleration should stop. When we turn we should add a speed penalty based on the severity of the turn. A character with a very can have a very simple animation. 
which is composed of two animation loops, the first being the standing animation loop and the second being the running animation loop. The paper presents a few tricks for creating good animations. These include creating animations to match a desired speed. We can then slow the speed of an animation, but it will only look good if it is close to the intended speed. Additionally, a character which is running at full speed should al algorithmically lean into its turns. It should also algorithmically generate a transition frame between two different animation loops. If done correctly, an animation between standing to walk can look seamless. To deal with a sudden stop, we can interpolate the standing position so long as we make sure to not pierce the geometry with the character's foot. A more complicated transition system can be used. This system would deal with the problem of a sudden stop by having multiple stopping animations where the difference between them is the foot that the character stops with. At the end of this paper, the animations and their triggers are all written out in a table from the perspective of someone who is observing the game without knowing any implementation details. This paper on Super Mario 64 presents the mechanics behind a good third-person camera model. This makes it clear why a well-designed camera can be a critical issue within a game. This paper does not present any other games other than Super Mario 64, but I would assume that it is used in later 3D Mario titles, as well as in the game Psychonauts, which I, has a similar camera. Thank you for your time. I will answer any questions that are posted in the forums if there are any.